Alright, so this is a bit of a double tutorial because I like to do my modeling in SketchUp rather than Blender. And uh, so, first, I'm just going to quickly go over how to export a file from SketchUp that you can then import into Blender. This is the actual model that I'm going to be using in the tutorial. As you can see, it's pretty simple and yet also has some sophisticated elements to it. So the first step is just to go to File, Export, 3D Model, and then Export. So that's the first step. Alright, so the next step is to start up Blender, and I'm running version 2.5. I highly recommend it. It's a lot better than the last major release. And uh, so here's the workspace. Th for some reason, they like to put a cube in there for you, whatever. I just delete that. Don't need it. And uh, next step is to import the Collada file that we created earlier. And there it is. Import Collada. Okay. So this is something that you probably won't need to know, but I'm just going to put it in there since uh, this is a model from SketchUp. Um, if you'll notice, there's a whole bunch of meshes here. It's not just one mesh like it should be. I don't know why SketchUp does that, but whatever. So we want to turn this into one mesh. And that is achieved by going to Select, Select All by Type, go to Mesh, and then under the object heading here, join. And that turns all of the uh, meshes into one single mesh. And now I'm going to save the file. Okay. Alright, once again, the next step is kind of something that you only need to do if you're doing what I do, which is the export from uh, SketchUp and import into Blender thing. Uh, for whatever reason, the Collada mesh is a little bit sloppy when it comes out of SketchUp, so you need to optimize it uh, from within Blender. And in order to do that, you want to go to Object uh, Mode and switch to Edit Mode. And uh, now you can actually see all the geometry of the model, the actual um, triangles, that, uh, the polygons that make, make up the uh, construct. And uh, the next step is to select all again. You can hit A or go to select, select all. <coughs> and uh, then you want to go down to remove right here and remove doubles and what that does is it rem removes all the duplicate vertices you c as you can see up here it removed almost 2,000 vertices and presumably those were created by the uh, SketchUp exporter and uh, one other thing that I like to do once again this isn't like this isn't critical it's just sort of like a best practice or whatever is uh, I like to recalculate the normals and uh, once again that kind of just makes sure everything's in its right place and then I will because I'm OCD I will go to remove doubles again and uh, what you want to see is remove zero vertices so after all that cleanup is done then you can just save the model again alright now that all that that's done we want to actually get around to doing the UV mapping. So that's access to this little pull down over here. And you want to go down to UV slash image editor. And it opens over here in this window. And then you can take this crossbar and drag it over here, split the screen, and uh, that, and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in. I like to do that just so I can see better what's going on. And the next step is to go down here to the UV mapping header. And uh, you'll notice there's a mark seam option and clear seam option. 
that's for advanced uh, UV mapping or you would actually manually cut this uh, model up into several little pieces that would then constitute the UV map. I'm lazy and I'm philosophically opposed to doing that kind of tedious manual labor when algorithms uh, in theory should do a much better job although that's not actually the case but whatever like I said this is a quick and dirty UV mapping tutorial so what you want to do is go to unwrap and basically what that does is it's gonna flatten out this 3D model into a two-dimensional image map and uh, you don't want to use this top option that is not gonna work what you want to do is go to smart UV project and uh, that pops up this little window with these two options that uh, can allow you to fine-tune exactly how the geometry is flattened. I'm just going to go with the default results and uh, and uh, once I click this OK button the UV map is going to appear over in the right hand window. So here it is, the great mythological UV map. Um, now you have to keep in mind that uh, the UV map and the model are um, linked so basically um, once you create the UV map it's associated with this model and vice versa so you want to save your file to make sure that all the associations are maintained when you're editing the UV map later on okay so the next thing you want to do is go to UVs down here and export your UV layout and it's going to be a ping file takes a second and uh, so basically now you're ready to go to Photoshop or whatever your image editor of choice is alright so now I'm in Photoshop and I'm going to open the UV map that I just created in Blender and there it is so this is your actual flat texture map that you can then um, well this what you would do if you were actually texturing in is go in and every one of these polygons you would you would very carefully texture that um, in such a way that it would look good when it was applied to the uh, 3D geometry now um, here just want to do one quick thing to uh, make it obvious or more obvious what's going on here I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to drag it behind the UV map and then I'm going to fill it with uh, black so now as you can see it's quite um, obvious uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, aspects of the image map are um, geometry and which are just uh, um, basically irrelevant. All the black areas are um, areas that are not part of the image map. Only the uh, gray areas are the actual um, texturable zones. I mean you can you can make this uh, black part whatever you want. It doesn't matter because it's not actually going to show up on the uh, geometry. So now that we've gotten this far, it's time to actually um, see how this whole UV mapping thing works in practice. So what I'm going to do is find an aspect of the uh, UV map here that I recognize, and uh, this looks like a good, good thing to go with. This is the uh, little arrow, I believe, that is uh, pointing downwards on the uh, chute where the items come out of the vending machine. Alright, so once you've identified the part of the texture that you want to modify, you're going to want to start actually creating the texture. So I like to first create a new layer and drag that above the UV map, or you can just leave it where it is. Either one's fine. Um, it depends on your workflow and your style. And uh, I want this to be yellow, so. I'm gonna change this color to yellow and uh, 
Now, there are many ways that you could approach this. You could do it the most sloppy and easy way, which is to just start off with a brush right away and go in there and and paint your your area. Or you could use the lasso tool and select it if you have a steady enough hand and fill that area with the foreground color. As you can see the UV map since it's on top it uh, bleeds through which is kinda useful because it, it uh, shows you that you're still within the bounds of the uh, geometry. That's uh, You're pretty much always going to want to leave a copy of your UV um, layout somewhere in the file so that you can verify you know that you're in the right area and uh, another alternative and this is probably my favorite is using the pen tool because this gives you the absolute height of accuracy when it comes to surrounding an area and uh, and alternately, you may not even want to create your texture in Photoshop. You may want to create it in Illustrator or an equivalent program like that. But, uh, once you surround the area with the pen tool, you go to paths and you take your work, work path and you drag it down here onto this little dotted ball and that creates the selection which then you can you can fill or do whatever you want to. So obviously I'm not going to do the entire UV map because that would take potentially hours. Um, what I'm going to do is just this arrow to show you how the UV map relates to the uh, 3D model. So I'm going to move my layer up to the top here and uh, deselect. And then what I'm going to do is go to save for web and I'm going to save that as a ping so basically it's going to be in the same format it was going in and I'm going to save that as vendor dash t so that way I have a sort of uh, difference between uh, the two files so that I can tell them apart Alright, so here we are back in Blender. Nothing has changed since I exported the UV map. Now what we're going to do is apply the texture I just created in Photoshop to the model. And in order to see that, I'm going to have to go click on this little ball here and go to Textured. And now that creates um, a texture view for the model so that you can actually see the textures you apply. And in order to apply that, you want to go over here and go to Image, Open Image, and then click on the texture, Open Image, and now it's applied. Um, everything is selected, that's why this is a little um, confusing. So I'm going to go from Edit Mode into Object Mode, and now you can actually see uh, firsthand the relationship between the texture, UV map, and the actual geometry. As you can see all the gray lines that uh, show the actual geometry are showing up on the uh, model as a texture. In addition to the yellow arrow that I colored in, which is uh, was correctly identified. Um, you can also see that there's a little bit of a bleed here. Uh, that some of the yellow from the arrow is actually bleeding onto this button and that has to do with the, the fact that the UV map is low resolution and I was kind of sloppily coloring it in so that's something to look out for when you're texturing definitely so yeah that's basically just uh, an illustration of how the UV mapping actually works on the model and uh, uh, obviously, if I wanted to finish texturing this whole thing, I would, I would go through here and uh, uh, each one of these uh, s geometric segments would be done one by one. Um, I'm just going to show you a really quick and uh, neat little feature that uh, Blender has that makes 
iteration and testing a lot easier. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. Alright, so back in Photoshop, and what I'm going to do here is just take an easily identifiable um, bit of geometry here and I'm going to fill that with uh, light blue this time. And then save. Just replace that image. Alright, so back in Blender and now instead of having to go through all that uh, ridiculous uh, texture selection nonsense, you can just go to Reload Image and and there you go, it, re it uh, loads the current texture, the current version of the texture map. And so that saves a lot of time. Definitely, I'm sure you can see the utility there. So, yeah, this uh, texture map's already, what, like, maybe 4% complete? You can probably imagine how many hours it would take to uh, meticulously uh, go through, identify every one of these uh, segments, and then uh, texture them accordingly. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically... Uh, that's basically what it involves. So that was my tutorial for uh, quick and dirty UV mapping slash texturing in uh, SketchUp and Blender. And uh, I hope you found it educational. Thanks for watching.